Hey guys, welcome back to Mobile Dwellings where we are building a sweet tiny home on wheels for our friends Katie and Sam. In today's video, we're going to be going up on the roof and installing six solar panels, wiring them to a solar combiner box, and then into our solar charge controller in the electrical cabinet. Thank you for being here. Let's get right into it. Okay, so step number one today is going to be climbing up my treacherous rotting door ladder. Door ladder, door ladder. Look at this, it's rotting. And cleaning the roof. All right, so one of the first things we are doing here is we are wiring up a Solodec combiner box. This is gonna allow us to put each of our sets of panels that are in series into parallel in one location with a fuse. So this is made for a residential roof, but we've made it work for a bus as well. Works out fine. Here it is. So the wires are gonna come in through here, through a gland, which looks like this. And they're going to go into a fuse holder, which is gonna have a 20 amp fuse inside. And we need this power distributor as well. From here, we're gonna wire all this up and then go into the bus through one of these holes right here. So we're gonna do this down here instead of on top of the bus because it's just easier. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill three holes in here for our glands. The next thing we have to do is put in our fuse holders and our power distribution, knock out one of these knockouts. So that's basically what this looks like in here. You've got these fuse holders, this distribution, and this bus bar up top. We bought all this from a solar distributor called CED Green Tech in Tampa. All right, so in here are six panels. We are at CED Green Tech Tampa Bay. This is a big solar distributor. This is exactly the kind of place you want to get your panels from. These six panels, 400 watts each, were only 14, no, they were like $1,240. Super cheap, basically $200 each for big 400 watt panels. You can also get it at altenergystore.com other solar websites. I'll try and find a link for you below, but the distributor works out well too. All right, now we're gonna go on the roof of the bus and install this up there. Oh, is that a finger? You got, oh, you got a finger? Give birth. I'll help you out, go, go, go. Push. Oh, okay, you made it. You made it. That was so weird. <laughs> All right, so in an attempt to get this flat solo deck to connect nice and firmly with our curved roof, I have put a lot of screws in here and it's still not perfect, but I don't think it's going anywhere and I think I can add some die core from here. It's gonna be waterproof, so here's what we got going on. It's a lot of screws. There are rubber washers, so each of those screw holes are waterproof. Now we just need to make sure that from the outside with the die core, nothing can get under there. Even though there's a bunch of seal underneath, it doesn't hurt to have some more on top. With the sole deck all installed, the next thing to do, pop the panels on the roof and clamp them down. All right guys, now that we have the panels up here, it's really just a matter of cutting the cables loose, putting them in a location that we can access them, clamping down these panels with these bolts. They come with this sleeve when it's at the very end and that'll stop the panel from moving anywhere. So make sure you got your sleeve for the end. All right guys, so we are wiring up these solar panels. The door ladder is just not cutting anymore. We borrowed a ladder from this crew over here. Really kind of them, thank you guys for lending it to us. Not even sure it's theirs, but they lent it to us anyway. So we're basically we're putting each set of panels, two in series and three in parallel. So to do that, we are connecting the positive to the negative of each pair of panels. And then the positive and the negative left over collectively will go to our solar combiner box to put the panels in parallel. The reason for putting these in series is that it increases the volts, which is better for the solar charge controller and allows wire sizes to be slightly smaller. And putting them in parallel means that if one set of panels is shaded, the other two sets are performing at their peak performance. Because if you shade one of these panels, it affects all of them. So essentially we have three sets of two, and if the back of the bus is in shade, for example, only one set of two might be affected. Okay, so the positive and negative have been connected underneath that panel. And right here, as you can see, uh, right here, this is the positive 
cable. We're connecting it to the red cable because red means positive. All right, so now we're going right there so that we can connect that one to the negative. All right, the last one's over here. Okay, whole thing. Nice. We're gonna wire into this solar combiner box. Positive lines go into these fuses, the negatives go into here, and then one cable goes down. Okay, so we have some better wire strippers these days. Check this out, you just stick it in here, and then, boom. So now we have our 10 gauge wire here, We're going to connect all of our strings and bring them down to basically a breaker box. All right, Sam, you want these? Sam, you can wire it up. No need to tug it down or anything. thing I have to do up here is to clamp this wire down. So now this is all wired up. Sam is downstairs wiring it into our little breaker box. I guess that worked out. These cheap little rubber things that came on this Amazon DIN rail box are kind of horrible. I tried to silicone them, but they just <laughs> they just come off when it, whenever you try to stick stuff through them. Uh, but you got it through. Uh, yeah, and I pushed it back up and I think it's alright. We just have one breaker to turn off all the panels. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that means that we can turn this off and I can go put the fuses in. Is this off? Oh, what? Right now? You put the fuses in? Sorry. Yeah, I think they're in there. <laughs> oh, uh, fuses are in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you just wired all this hot. That's why they were sparking, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, well, we survived that. Um, Sam did cut two cables at once and create a bit of a spark. Anyways, solar panels are all wired up, so now we can clamp them back down, put the combiner box top off, and move down to this lower cabinet. Quiet around here for a minute. Must be lunchtime. Okay, so it turns out the fuses were in here. All right. My solar combiner box, probably never going in there again. Oh, you gotta tighten these up to, uh, Tighten the rubber waterproof connection that's in there. So, if we touch these guys, we should get, oh. 86.5. All right, good, so we didn't blow the fuses. So, let's cover it up. So we are all clamped down and we are all wired up. I'm about to get off this roof. By the way, guys, if you have any doubts about these racks and stuff, these things are clamped down here rock solid. They are not going anywhere, and I've already proven that. Close to 30,000 miles. Every once in a while I go onto the roof and I check to see how tight they are, make sure they haven't vibrated loose, and they really do not vibrate loose. They are rock solid. So this whole system gets a big thumbs up from me. If you didn't see my racking video, I'll link to that in this card right here. Go watch that. It's a good choice. I like it. You may feel inclined to take your solar cables, tape them down with some kind of heavy duty tape, like a turnabond. I personally just kind of wire clamp them together and let them bounce around. There's no problem with it. They just kind of sit up here. By the way, if you ever wanted to get into here again, really would just be to change the fuse or fix the wiring. You will have to unclamp these two panels, push them back to open this. It's unfortunate, but there's really no way around it with this particular box. With the panels wired up, and now that Sam is wired to the breaker, he has now dropped a wire to go down to the solar charge controller. This guy right here. And then back up from the Lynx distribution bar right here. So our next step is going to be to wire into the solar charge controller, and that's what we're doing next. All right, so the wiring to the solar charge controller is extremely simple. Just a positive and a negative wire to the controller and another one to the battery bank. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the like button if you got some value out of it. Hit subscribe if you want to see more, and we'll see you next time.